Dollar Tree on Wednesday announcing it will close nearly a thousand family dollar stores over the next few years as it battles macroeconomic concerns and theft. Battling theft. You know, that happens here in America's shoplifting capital more than anywhere else in the country. But theft is especially bad on discount stores like this one, which is why they're vanishing from New York City. The growing problem with shoplifting. You've probably seen cases of merchandise, things like toothpaste and laundry detergent locked up behind glass at your favorite store. The problem getting so bad, New York State is setting up a task force to tackle it. Dollar Tree announcing they're going to close more than 10% of all family dollar locations. You were an assistant manager there? Mm -hmm. It's terrible. I had a guy swipe a whole shelf because he needed it for his family. They have no shame about it. They just they know there's no consequence or they have the perception that there's no consequence. The discount retail giant says it is now raising its base price point to $1.50 and capping items at $7. The hashtag cost of living has 2.8 billion views on TikTok. Most are talking about what they're giving up in order to live right now. I feel like it's like now you have to like minimize and say, you know what? I need this. I don't need this. So nationwide chain Dollar Tree closing a thousand of its stores, citing losses partly due to theft. And what nobody's talking about is how especially devastating this new shoplifting epidemic is turning out to be. In New York, you've already got one out of every three people spending half their income on rent alone, forcing more people than ever to rely on the very stores that may soon close forever. Which is why you'd think city leaders would be more concerned with stopping shoplifting, but they aren't for some reason. Maybe they don't think it's a big deal. Yet crime here is so bad, you've got discount brands like TJ Maxx and Target that have recently shut locations. Other discount stores have also shuttered. And on top of that, an entire mall was recently shut down and all the stores inside closed because of crime. And if you find a store that's open, you'll see walls of glass locking up virtually everything because the uncomfortable truth about New York City is that we'd rather lock up our products than our criminals. And now that discount stores are in trouble, New Yorkers are starting to ask big questions. Like how will people survive in America's most expensive city if all the affordable stores are gone? And why is it so hard for the city to actually do something that puts shoplifting to an end? But in order to understand why this is happening, you've got to realize that New York City has made it very tough for these stores to exist for a long time. And the ones that are here have been surviving, but just barely for years, which is why it's so surprising that nobody saw this coming. will have an immediate impact on low-income communities because that's where many of these dollar stores are located. But now Dollar Tree, which is the parent company of Family Dollar, says about a thousand of those stores have to go in order to keep the company profitable and viable. So why are they closing the stores? Well, they have to keep the company afloat. But that's a huge problem because people rely on these stores. And if these stores shut down, one of the last affordable lifelines available for people that live around here is going to disappear. And people are going to get stuck paying more money for the same stuff. But as you're about to see, for many of these stores, closing might be the only option as they've been struggling for years. Yet city leaders have been perfectly content to allow these places to languish under the costs of high rent and high crime for far too long. The dollar store family chain stores have struggled in recent years with keeping stores fully stocked and clean with customers complaining the stores were oftentimes poorly managed. So if a store looks like a disaster, there's a reason for it. And even though a lot of these complaints affect stores all over the country, here it's even worse. Because the goal here is to sell low cost items in a high cost city where rents for stores this big are insane. And if rents are high, the store has to do with less employees because they've got to pay rent, which is why it's not easy to keep the shelves stocked. You're an assistant manager there? Mm -hmm. So what happens is we get four managers to a store Yep. and then they get most of the hours and then the rest of the hours goes to the employees, which isn't enough. So we're talking about maybe 14 hours a week sometimes. God. Oh, so there's just not enough people not working enough the people stores. To work there. Plus in New York, minimum wage is $16 an hour. And when you combine that with high crime, which is why all the detergent has tags on it, you've got a recipe for disaster. On top of that, things are so bad, New York now has a $4.4 billion shoplifting black market where stolen items are brought to warehouses and then sold on online marketplaces like Facebook. And things are so out of control, you now have professional shop lifters. This is all they do. The lower end consumer, while employed, has been dealing with high inflation uh, and also reduced government benefits. And that has been one of the 
areas that both discount retailers have been dealing with, along with, on the cost side, uh, quite a bit of shrink, which is basically loss of product from stealing and the like at the stores. And think about how much worse this is for discount stores in New York City. High inflation means even the cheapest stuff in the store costs more to make, and the problem with high theft is that every time something gets stolen, there's less products on the shelf for the store to sell and make money. And here's another problem. This is probably the biggest step they can take as far as store security goes, because anything more than this that can't be taken off at the register, like let's say, for example, you had walls of glass blocking everything, that would require an in-store attendant to come over and unlock, and staffing is already a problem here. And between the high costs associated with operating these, they're already in a tough position. And once criminals start targeting stores like this, they've almost got no choice but to call it quits. But surprisingly, since the economy's bad for everybody, it might be giving dollar stores a way out of this mess. But the problem is, if the stores end up taking it, they may still end up disappearing just in a different way. Dollar Tree is seeing a higher-end demographic coming to their store. $125,000 demographic is now shopping at Dollar Tree more so than they were before. You know, there's no other city where a six-figure income goes less far than it does here, and that's the chance that stores like this have to survive, but it's going to eliminate them as a place for its normal customer to find affordable stuff. Because think about it, if discount stores are seeing more customers with higher household incomes, perhaps what they can do is raise their prices, make more money every time they sell something. But if they do that, the very people who relied on this store for a long time are going to be in a bind because it's like the store doesn't exist anymore for them. And either way, the affordable store with the low prices is now gone forever. And that's probably what a lot of places are going to try to do before they call it quits and completely close the store. Many may disappear by simply pricing out their old customer base and no longer being the same type of discount store they once were. And even if many of these companies figure out how to survive by raising their prices, that still doesn't do anything about the crime problem. And if that continues, stores are just going to be targeted, especially if less people can afford to shop here, which means they could end up having to close no matter what. But even if the dollar stores do manage to stay in business, critics are calling them somewhat of a poor tax on your everyday consumer who doesn't know that the stores have deceptive ways of getting them to spend more money. And what that could mean is they're not helping the communities that rely on them as much as people might think they are. Here we are in Midtown on 40th Street where we'll find a bunch of discount stores, but there are things going on inside these places that might allow them to make every penny. What am I saying? I like Jax. I don't want to talk bad about Jax, but the stuff inside isn't what we think, and I was kind of shocked to learn some of what we're about to look at. Especially since I used to live around here and would shop at Jax's other location, which closed all the time. But what's also interesting about these discount chains is although they sell super cheap items, some of the same items you'll see at a Dollar Tree they don't have the same types of problems we just saw at Dollar Tree. Maybe it's the multiple security guards I saw in each store. But the critics' contention here is that these stores aren't as helpful to people looking to save money as they appear. Here's a Colgate toothpaste we bought at CVS compared to the same one from Dollar Tree. These smaller products keep prices low but also mean you'll need to replace them more often, which means more visits and even more spending. So as an avid dollar store shopper, I would definitely say that this is one of the best stores you could possibly go to. I mean, look at it. It doesn't look like it's got any problems, but the super micro-sized items like this bleach, I mean, look, it says 33% more, but this is like 200% smaller than the size of Clorox I'm normally used to getting, and it's $2. But the thing I never realized was that the actual package that you're buying is somewhat deceptive. I mean, look, we flipped this tape over, and that's, you know, I think I've seen thicker rolls of tape for more money elsewhere. It's got the same diameter, but the interior is definitely not there. The same thing was the case over there at Family Dollar, the super thin rolls of tape. Might be the same with the food, too. I don't know of this brand of kettle chips, but in the past, I never realized the small sizes of everything because there's no way to do a comparison. In store, it's hard to tell if this is a full-size bottle of Elmer's glue or if it's a smaller size designed specifically for a discount store because they don't have the full-size version here. And the reason that's sneaky is because when I run out of small 
small trash bags in this tiny little box that's like the size of my hand, I've got to come back and buy more trash bags, just like I've got to come back and buy more bleach when I run out of bleach. Again, I love Jax. If I still lived here, I'd probably come back, but look at the tape. You can see that it's like a super thin roll of tape in there, even though there's two of them. You're going to run out of tape faster here than you would if you bought a full-size item, maybe at CVS. The only problem is the items at CVS cost a lot more, but it's sneaky because it means that each time you come in the store, you're buying a whole bunch of things that appear to be very inexpensive. And while you're doing that, you're building up buying momentum. Everything you put in the cart looks like a great deal. So what do you do? You fill it up with as many things as you can, thus buying more than you may have had you gone to a store that sold full price, full size items. This toothpaste, definitely not full size, but they have full size toothpaste, $3.99. I would probably come here and get this. But other items like these electronics for cell phones, I'm not too sure. I can't imagine the $4 headphones sound as incredible as the packaging looks, even though they're lab tested. Plus, it's ultimately cheaper to purchase household supplies in bulk, something you wouldn't really find at any dollar stores. A six pack of toilet paper at Dollar General costs $3, which is 50 cents a roll. Whereas if you order a 24 pack on Amazon for $5.48, comes out to 23 cents a roll. Okay, so the prices in this video are old, but the comparison still exists. Just look at the tiny toilet paper over there at Family Dollar. And the ones here appear to be about the same size, tiny little rolls. $2.49. And again here, none of the paper products are brand name or full size, which means there's no way to do a full size apples to apples comparison while you're here. But the reason this is called a tax on the poor is because these tiny little items, you're going to run out of this after one or two loads of laundry. And even the bigger one here, you're going to run out maybe four or five loads of laundry. And it costs more money to buy these smaller things. You save when you buy in bulk. And what that means is that by trying to save money at a store like this, you actually end up spending more money in the long run, defeating the entire purpose of shopping here in the first place. And at first, a dollar pack of AA batteries look like a bargain. The dollar store batteries, however, are more likely to leak. Because they are made from carbon and zinc, they don't last as long as name brand alkaline batteries from. So I never knew that alkaline was a selling point and I've definitely purchased these low quality batteries before without knowing it. On the packaging, it says for low power devices. I guess I didn't realize that that meant it wasn't gonna last very long if I put it in a regular device. But in defense of stores like Lot Less and Jack's, we're in Lot Less right now, a lot of these items come from the exact same factories and are made in the exact same places as name brand stuff. Although as somebody with a five-year-old living at home, I can definitely say all bubble mix is not created equal. And the cleaning supplies may not be as effective if you don't get a well-known brand. It might be more watery, which is something I've definitely noticed with the dish soap that looks too good to be true. This is a lot of dish soap for eight bucks. You can get a workout with this thing. And the non-name brand band-aids, these definitely don't stay on as long, that's for sure. But at the end of the day, all of this stuff works. It serves its intended purpose. This thing will mount my phone with a suction cup to a level surface. This wall outlet extender will let me plug more stuff in. And if you're having a party, I mean, are you gonna go wrong with 100 plates for $9? And what this means is despite their imperfections, if discount stores either start shutting down or they change around their pricing so that they are no longer dollar or discount stores, New Yorkers will be worse off because just about everything else in the city is bankrupting people and city leaders don't seem interested in addressing those issues either for some reason. Reason. According to this true cost of living report by United Way of New York City, costs have increased 131 percent. While the latest findings now show 50 percent of working age New Yorkers are struggling to cover costs. So 50 percent of working age New Yorkers unable to cover their expenses without some sort of government assistance. That's tough. That's approximately three million people, a staggering figure. And the financial reality for many is that this is just a tough city that takes basically everything from you. And even though discount stores aren't perfect, the city definitely needs more of them, not less. But with an out of control crime epidemic that's already shuttering some businesses and a get out of jail free card if you steal less than a thousand dollars worth of stuff, you either need a store in the perfect part of town like this, or you've got to sell stuff that's so expensive that when you make sales, you're staying in business. But critics say the real issue that nobody's talking about is that it pays to be a criminal in New York. I mean, hey, we've got a $4.4 billion shoplifting black market. 
those are full-time jobs. Plus, we've got a no-consequences environment. People arrested for shoplifting? These are not people who are removed from the streets, even if they're guilty. And some people say that the city's soft-on-crime laws and soft-on-crime attitude might be contributing to poverty, not erasing it, which was the hope of a lot of these decriminalization efforts. And the evidence for this is everywhere. Just look at how it's hurting small businesses. They don't know how to deal with this. And if big national retailers are having a problem with it, a mom and pop shop, might be the end for them. It's really a no-win situation for a lot of privately run stores. If they hire more people, then their costs just go up. And if they hire less people to try and save money, more people are just gonna steal. One clothing store where they interviewed the owners, they said that the people stealing from it used to hide the fact that they were shoplifting maybe a few years ago, but now they just walk in and take what they want and then they're out. Which could be part of the reason everything in the city just costs more and more and more. Inflation is off the roof. I'm feeling it most when it comes to rent but I do feel a little bit when it comes to grocery shopping. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, groceries and electricity are up 25% since January. These are just not really encouraging stories to hear. It's so tough for people to make ends meet in this city. But critics say inflation on everything from what you wear to what you eat isn't the whole story here. And that's because even though crime is a big problem in New York where stores like this are completely locked down, it's that attitudes about theft have changed. Look at this, 30% of Gen Z shoppers prefer self-checkout just so they can shoplift. In a perfect world, self-checkout would benefit people who were in a rush and wanted to get out quickly. But in New York, you've got the added problem of laws that actually aid shoplifters. For example, Back in 20, the city banned single-use plastic bags, which were a great way for a store to see if somebody was filling up their own bag with stuff that didn't belong to them. Now, yes, the goal of banning plastic bags for most businesses does decrease plastic waste in the environment, but it means people are either paying more money for a bag like this, or it means that criminals have another tool in their war on the rest of us. And that's why many discount stores that helped New Yorkers for so long are in trouble. Even 7-Eleven. 7 eleven's supposed to be a place that has deals. But look, the apple fritters are even locked up. The drinks are all in locking cabinets as well. And the Ben and Jerry's ice cream pints are $9.99. That is absolutely crazy. And that's why even if a national chain like Dollar Tree manages to keep its New York City stores open by raising their prices, the stores are going to disappear. Anyways, New York isn't going to be able to have affordable things for people to buy because critics say theft, inflation, and the other costs associated with just being here are so high that it's an unsustainable ship these discount stores are on. What do you think about that? Is that true? Let me know. I appreciate you watching as always. I'll see you in the next video.